Now, James also uh, uh, teaches us the second uh, most common mistake. It is this. It is this. It is, it is about presuming the future. Presuming about the future. So the first common mistake is making plans without God. To have God's blessing, I must involve God in my plans. The second common mistake is what? Presuming about the future. In other words, thinking that you know what's going to happen in the future. Well, guess what? I don't know what's going to happen in my future. Uh, neither do you. And the fact is nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. You don't. You don't. Now, a lot of people waste a lot of money, uh, paying a lot of money, uh, to you try to find out what's a living in going into prognosticating, <laughs> going into predicting the future, going into forecasting. People will pay big bucks to know about their future. People flock to places like finding out their horoscope, uh, finding out uh, the, their astrology, going to palm readers to tell them what's going to happen. In the, if it, people pay a lot of money to, uh, for tea leaf reading, going through crystal balls, urge balls, and on and on and on and on. They don't work. It's a bunch of baloney. None of those guys know anything about your future. By the way, have you noticed, have you noticed that you've never seen a headline that says, Psychic Wins Lottery? Have you, have you realized that? Because they don't know about the future. Now, the last jackpot was uh, about $17 billion. And guess what? Ever since the history of lottery, a psychic has never won the lottery. How about, how about this? That malam so-and-so wins lottery. It has never happened. You've never seen a headline like that. Why? Because they don't know. It doesn't work. The Bible says nobody knows the future. Only God knows the future. And God is saying, so we should not presume about the future. We shouldn't be presumptuous that I know what's going to happen tomorrow. I know what's going to happen next month. And so this is what I'm going to I'm going to live my life in line with what I know about the future. Look at what James teaches us in James 4, uh, verse 14 and 16. He says, he says, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? And the question is, you don't know. You don't know. And he says, your life is like the morning fog. It is here a little while, then it's gone. You are boasting about your own pretentious plans, and all such boasting is evil. And James is saying, predicting is sin. It is plain God. And there are two reasons why presuming about the future is a mistake. The first he tells us is that life is unpredictable. Look at it. It says, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? It's unpredictable. You don't know about it. And it's saying life cannot be, you cannot predict tomorrow. Even the best educated ideas and predictions often go wrong. How many times have you made plans? You say, well, I've buttoned this plans up. Here's a checklist. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And, and it, it goes away. I mean, we have New Year resolutions. This is what I'm going to do this year. Financially, emotionally, relationally, physically, on the job. Here's all the things that I'm going to accomplish this year. How long does it last? How long does it last? Even the best made plans go away. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow because life is unpredictable. And James says because life is unpredictable, we should not presume on it. Instead, we've got to trust God every day. And that's what tells us how we've got to live our life. Every day is trusting on God, leaning on God, looking to God. Every day, every day we live, we live in, on depending on Almighty God. Now, that's the, the key reasons why God does not tell us about the future. Because what? He wants us to trust him. He wants us to live by faith. If God told you everything that's going to happen in your life, there will be no need for you to trust him, and that will uh, not get you into a strong relationship with God. Well, secondly, the reason why God doesn't tell us about our future is because he's going to scare you to death. Uh, it's because you're going to run away from what God has planned for you. You may not like it because you don't understand it, because you don't know how it all fits into God's perfect will for your life and for your generation. You know, I mean, I grew up as a young boy, wanted to be a physician. I thought it would be cool to be a medical doctor. And boy, I mean, I am thrilled. I am thrilled. Uh, 
I'm living my life serving God, living my life uh, uh, sharing the good news of God. And you have come to know me. You have come to know me as one who is a, a spokesperson, is one who's a lover of God, a friend of Jesus, one who uh, takes delight and joy. Nothing brings me greater joy in sharing the good news. This is my destiny. This is my calling. I, I, I've got passion and joy and zeal in sharing the word of God. As a matter of fact, this is one thing that comes so easy and so enjoyable for me. And that's one of the reasons why the God tells us we shouldn't presume about the future because life is un un unpredictable. Unpredictable. Uh, and James says, yes, we've got to what? Uh, bring God in the mix. The second reason why, uh, why we should not presume upon the future is that life is brief. Uh, he says, it says, your life, what? It's like the morning fog. It is here a little while, then it is gone. In other words, it's like a mist that vanishes. It means your life is a, a vapor. Uh, it's like when you breathe on a cold glass and it forks up or a mirror and then just very quickly it evaporates and goes away and says, this is how brief your life is. And so don't presume that this is what I'm going to do three years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, now fifteen years from now. Here are all the things that will come to pass in my life. He says, don't assume as if you've got all the time in your left in, left in your hands. That's not a way. It's one of the biggest mistakes that people make about the future. It says, I have plenty of time to do this. I'll get around to doing this someday. And, and, and James, inspired by the Holy Spirit, tells us, your life is like a mist. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You better not take tomorrow for granted. Don't assume that you've got all this time left. Oh, look at what uh, uh, wise King Solomon tells us in the wisdom book of Proverbs, Proverbs 27.1. He says, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Don't presume on tomorrow. So what's the solution? What's the solution? When God comes around and says, hey, uh, don't, don't, don't make a mistake of presuming uh, uh, about the future. But here's the solution. Here's the solution. Is this. It says, well, I must live one day at a time. I must live one day at a time. God, when he created your life, he, put, he created your life in 24-hour segments. And it says, live one day at a time. Live life fully one day at a time. Today, do everything you can within your power, within your allowance, moved by the Holy Spirit, using every resources, every opportunity God has given you, and do the best you can today. You cannot live your future today. You can only live one day at a time. And this is what Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 34. He says, so do not be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time time. He says, if you don't do that, life will become overwhelming for you, trying to pack three years, five years, ten years, a year, a month into one day. You can't. You're going to drop the ball. You're not going to be able to fulfill what God wants you to fulfill today, and you'll miss out on destiny living. Instead of that, live the day fully, fully a day at a time. Yes, plan for the future, but live one day at a time. Plan for the future and leave your plans in God's hands and let God direct the future. But today, do what you are moved by God to be able to do and do it with all your might. Amen. And the reason James says that, that is important because life is unpredictable and life is brief. If you're trying to live the, your future life today, what will happen is that you're going to be worried, you're going to be fearful, you'll be filled with all kinds of insecurities. That's why he tells us. That's what he tells us uh, in Matthew 6, 34. He says, don't be anxious about tomorrow. If you're trying to live your future life today, if everything is packed, what am I going to do three years from now? Look at what's going to happen. I mean, what we we'll do is you project what happened in the past, what's happening today into tomorrow. And guess what happens? We have a memory that always remembers the bad things and forgets the good things. And so what it is is your, your heart and your mind will be filled with all the things that have happened, all the missed opportunities, everything that people did to you, everything that you wanted to do that didn't come to pass. And so what will happen is you're going to have a light. You're going to be, be filled with fear, worry, and all kinds of insecurities. Get that? Don't do that. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow, but today live one day at a time. You don't know what the next five years or ten years uh, holds. 
You don't know what the future holds, but what you do know is the one who holds the future. Live it in God's hands. Live one day at a time. Live one day trusting the Lord. God will take care of you tomorrow. God is in the mix. He is your Lord. He is your Savior. And so to live that life of destiny, the life of success, the, oh my Lord, focus on God one day at a time and what does it mean what does it mean to trust in god the more what does it mean to depend on god the more it is what david tells us king david tells us i love this portion of scripture oh make it your motto make it the key of your life memorize this portion of scripture in psalm 31 psalm 31 verse 14 and 15. here's here's the prophet david speaking he says i am trusting you O lord you are my god my future is in your hands Today I'm trusting you. Today I'm holding on to you. Today I'm under, I'm under, I'm submitted to you, oh Lord. You are my God. But when it comes to my future, it's not in my hands, not in my enemy's hands, not in anyone's hands. My future is in your hands. Oh, your peace will go way up. And your fear and your worry, your anxiety, your insecurities will come very, very low when you adopt uh, this teaching. Leaving everything in God's hands. My future is in God's hands. And God will make a way. God will connect the dots. God will put all the pieces together and will accomplish great and awesome things that he has in store for my life. And so how can I choose a godly life that will lead me to success and generational blessing? Not only for me, for my children and children's children. Uh, James tells us, here's what to avoid, here's what to adapt. Avoid planning without God. Instead, include God in all your plans. And you'll be successful in carrying them out. Next, avoid presuming about tomorrow, but instead make plans about the future, yet live what? One day at a time, trusting in the Lord. Amen. Oh, here's a third, here's a third common mistake that James wants us to avoid. It is this. It is, it is what? Putting off <laughs> doing what's right. Oh, we, oh, this is a big one. <laughs> Amen. And we like doing this. It's a common mistake we all uh, have done. As you raise both hands, uh, it's about procrastination. It's about delaying. It's about postponing. Uh, it's having every intention of doing things better, changing, and yet we put it off. And here's what James tells us. James tells us in verse 17 uh, of our scripture, James 4, 17. He says, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. This is what you know how to do. God's word has uh, moved in your heart. Your eyes have been opened. You've come to that knowledge and understanding what you need to do in your family, in your parenting, in your marriage, uh, on the job, for your finances, for your health, and your spiritual walk with the Lord. God has made abundantly clear what to do. And then what do we do? We procrastinate. We delay. We postpone. How many of you will agree with this, that we know too much and yet we do so little? If we implemented everything God's told us to do, if we implemented every experience that God has brought us through, those bad experiences that God has shown us that if we do, it will lead us astray. And those good practices God, God has demonstrated in our life, in the life of others, that has come to our purview, that if we follow this in his word, he has spoken to us, that this is the way of the Lord that will bring blessing, if we put those things into practices. Oh, we know that it will come to pass in the life. Instead, what do we do? We major in procrastination, in delaying, in postponing. And God is saying, hey, let's avoid this mistake of pulling off doing what's right. Pulling off doing what's right. Here's why. Because God's plans will come to pass. The will of God will come to pass. And if we're not willing to get in line with God and become his agent, become his vessel, become his spokesperson that... Uh, I, I allow ourselves for God to use our voice, our eyes, our hands, our feet to be able to accomplish his good purposes. Guess what? God will pick somebody. God will use somebody to accomplish his good purposes. And, and where does that leave us? And so delays, procrastinations, we miss out. Uh, it blocks our blessings. It invalidates us from being used by God uh, to accomplish what he has in store for us. And so uh, James comes and says, avoid, avoid uh, this mistake. And he tells us, he tells us uh, in verse 17, James 4, 17. Uh, let's look at that again. He says, what if anyone then knows the good thing they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. Now, 
if I were to ask you to give me a definition of sin, perhaps you would uh, say something like, oh, it's uh, sin is adultery, sin is lying, sin is cheating, sin is murder. Actually, the Bible talks more about the sins that we do not do than the sins that we do. In, in, in fact, Jesus was more concerned about the sense of omission than the sense of commission. The stuff that we know we ought to do and yet we do not do, God says, hey, I want you to be attentive to this. Don't put it off. Go right ahead and do it. Look at what Jesus says. You know what Jesus says in judgment. Look at this portion of scripture uh, in Matthew 25. Matthew 25, uh, verse 42 to 43. He says what? For I was hungry and you wouldn't feed me. Thirsty and you wouldn't give me anything to drink. A stranger and you refused me hospitality. Naked and you wouldn't clothe me. Sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Right? Look at, look at those words. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't, you refused, you wouldn't, and you didn't. The sin of omission. What we ought to do, and yet we put it off. And, 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 and the Bible tells us that we can be very proud of all the things we do not do, and still be sinning. We could say, well, I don't do this, I don't do this, I don't do this, I don't do this, but God says, but what about these things that you know you ought to do, that you do not do? And James reminds us, that, hey, uh, if we know the good we ought to do, we should go right in and do it. Because it's a sin before Almighty God. And, and God looks at it and says, hey, these are things that we ought to be doing that will lead to our prosperity. Instead, we are putting it off. We should, uh, uh, our hearts and our minds should be aligned. We should uh, realize that, hey, so here are some things that now is the time to put into practice. And we should go right ahead and do them for our blessing. Procrastination. It's a cell trap of someday I will. We say like one of these days, one of these days I will do this. Well, one of these days is none of those days. When I get around, I will do this. Well, it never happens. Those days don't come around. You say one of these days I'll go to the dentist. You say one of these days I will spend more time with my family. One of these days I'm going to give up this bad habit. And for those of you who are online, I want to encourage you, if you've been thinking, one of these days I'll become a member of Favor Life Church. One of these days I'll worship in person here at Favor Life. I encourage you to do it now because you have no guarantee of tomorrow. And so what's the solution? To avoid and putting off what I need to do now, avoid putting off the right things I need to do. Here's the solution. The solution is this. that Whatever it is, do it now while you have the opportunity. Whatever it is, do it now while you have the opportunity. And God comes and says, hey, don't put it off any longer. This is your opportunity to do the things that God wants you to do and go ahead and put it in practice so that you will be blessed by God. That whatever you intend to do in your life, let it be so. God has moved on your heart. He has opened those doors. He has created the environment. Everything is lined up. Go ahead and step right forward. The scripture says the king's work requires haste. Without delay, without procrastinating, without postponing. Arise and do the things today that God has, has spoken to your heart. Has made it clear in his word. Has encouraged you to do. No more delays. Do it now. And this is the solution. Do it now while you have the opportunity, whatever it is. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, verse 27 to 28. He says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. He says, do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. Step on it. And get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done. Oh, my good friends, there are three things that you can do with your life. You can waste your life or you can spend your life or you can invest your life. Now, it's very easy to waste your life. It's a life that is focused on vanity, a life that is focused on pleasure. 
a life that's focused on entertainment. That's how you waste your life. Or you can spend your life. How do you spend your life? By making your number one priority your career, building your career, building your wealth, building your fame, seeking the popularity and recognition all the time from others. Guess what? Guess what? You're going to leave it all behind. You're going to leave it all behind. But here's what you can do that God wants you to focus on. Investing your life. Investing your doing the kind of things that will outlast your life. The things that will bring glory to God, you'll be dead and gone, and still your life will be lived on through the actions, the, the good behavior, the choices that you made, motivated by God's word and his spirit. It will live on and on and on and on and on. And God tells us here that I put you here on earth for a purpose. Or your life may be 40, 50, 60, 70, or 80, or, or 90 years. Not many will live past that. Uh, but he says, make it count. Let your, invest your life for eternity. Live your life for God's purposes without any excuses. Today is your day to get started. Don't procrastinate. Don't put it off. When you do that, God is going to use you to accomplish great and awesome things that will outlast your life, that will bleed on to the next generation, that many will be drinking from your well. Your life here on earth will end, but that will not be the end of your life. You'll be up in heaven, and the seeds that you sown here will be bearing much fruit in life. Oh, my brother, my sister. Let me ask you a question. Have you made any plans in your life? Are there some goals or aspirations that you want to see come to pass? Make plans, pray, and watch. Don't make a mistake of planning without God, but instead, if you want God's blessing for your life, I must involve God in my plans. Don't presume about the future. Instead, live one day at a time. And oh, my brother, my sister, oh, don't get to a place in your life where you are putting off the good that God wants you to do instead. Whatever it is that needs to be done, do it now while you have the opportunity and God will greatly, greatly bless you. Wherever you are, would you bow your heads? Wherever you are, would you get into a place of total surrender to God and tell God, my life belongs to you. Make him the center of your life. Make him the manager of your affairs, the director. Uh, make him the engineer of all your situations and tell God, God, I'm counting on you. I'm looking at you, to you. I'm trusting you. Give me a heart to trust you more, to depend on you, and to lean on you. Tell God wherever you are. Oh, Father, right now, as your people are looking to you and calling on you, I pray, oh God, that you will undergird their life with your wisdom. Father, oh God, my Lord, even now, while your people, every head is bowed, I pray, oh God, that you will open their eyes to your truth, to your plans, to your purposes, Lord God. Come, oh God, and center their life around your good plans, your good, perfect, pleasing plan. And move them in the direction that you want them to be. Help them to make those choices that will lead to that God-ordained destiny for their life, Lord God. And remind them, remind your people every day to lean on you, to trust you more, to depend on you, to look to you for strength, for stamina, for wisdom, for guidance, that they will walk on the your direction, Lord God Almighty. Father, today, oh God, my Lord, give your people the stamina, oh, to live one day at a time, to live a full life daily, not to put off, not to postpone, not to procrastinate, Lord God Almighty. Oh, but, oh, Jesus, teach us what to do, oh God, my Lord. Show us where to go and what to do and give us the power, oh, the sense of urgency to bring it to pass, Lord God Almighty. Oh, yes, Lord. Help us, Lord God Almighty, to live in the now. Help us to live, Lord God, in your will today, living strong. Help us to invest our life and do what needs to be done today, oh God, as you have appointed us for, so that we will bring glory to you and good to us. And Father, right now, Lord God, everyone gathered in this place, everyone, at the sound of my voice, reach out to them. Bless them, mighty God. 
Bring elevation in their life. Bring success in their life, Lord God. Open their eyes to see what you're doing in their lives, Lord God Almighty. Help them to trust in you, to depend on you, to look to you in all their ways, Lord God Almighty. Bless your people, mighty God. Oh, you can do more for them than they can. I pray, oh God, my Lord, that you will revi be revived in them. I pray, oh God, my Lord, that the presence of God will tower over them. Oh, Jesus, as Job said, why do you stalk me like the lion? Stalk your people, Lord God Almighty. Oh, populate their life with your sweet presence that everything they do, everywhere they go, they sense the warm embrace of your sweet presence, presence guiding, leading, shepherding them, oh God, my Lord. You do for them that only you can. Bless them really good as they've gathered before you. Oh, our God. We thank you. We love you, mighty King. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, my mother and my sister, if you've not given your life to Christ, oh, why wait? Don't leave this service without making Christ your Lord and your Savior. Do it now. 40 years ago, I gave my life to Christ. And what a difference he has made. And countless others who have given their life to Christ. He will take your places. He will change your life for the better. Let me pray a very simple prayer with you. The words don't matter. Oh, but it is the faith that you attach with it. That will make you a born again Christ follower. Pray with me. Jesus, I thank you for dying for my sins. I thank you for your blood that you shed to forgive me of all my wrongs and to pave the way that I can come to you. And so today, I open my life to you. Jesus, come in my life and be my Lord and Savior. Take over my life. Use me to accomplish what you have destined for my life so that my life will bring glory to you and good to me. Lord, from here on, help me to love you, to trust you, and to follow you for the rest of my life. And on the day that my life here on earth is over, please, Lord, come and take me so that in heaven, where you are, I will be with you forever. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. My brother, my sister, if you pray this prayer, here's a pamphlet that we'd like you to have. You can grab one uh, right here in this church. If you're online, go ahead and, and download that. Download the e-copy. Fresh start with God. Do you know your purpose? If you want a hard copy, we'd be glad to place one in the mail for you. Right in the portal that you are, send us your name and your address, and we'll dispatch one to you. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. May God bless you. Amen.